Right, so after an action-packed second day in Hobart, it's time for Ask George. So the first one today comes from Dizzy Yates. Uh, they ask, uh, many of England's dismissals have come from balls the batters shouldn't be playing. Are the coaches actually doing any technical work with them? Hello, Dizzy. Um, oh, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, a bit. Yes, they are doing a bit. I think the thing is that these are basic things. And you would hope that by the time players reach this standard that you wouldn't need to be doing that. The other thing is that um, you maybe don't want to be picking apart people's techniques when they're sort of in performance mode. But yeah, there's been a lot of talk in the nets about not defending balls that you don't need to play at all. And certainly Ollie Pope's been out that way several times, hasn't he? Uh, very disappointed, these are basic errors. What did you think of Burns' dismissal? I mean, run outs happen, they always look bad. Um, could he have dived? Would that have made a difference? Um, I thought it was unfortunate and the sort of thing that happens to a player when they're in pretty poor form anyway. He had, he probably, he should have been given out the previous ball, I think, caught behind. And I didn't think at any stage that he was going, going to go on and make a massive score. But, you know, um, I, you can't keep saying it's bad luck. Adam asks, why does Ollie Pope seem to think his off stump is about sixth or seventh stump? Yeah, it's infuriating. Um, he, he had look, looked quite good till then, but he doesn't know his off stump is. It's a massive technical flaw or temperamental flaw, maybe. And it is threatening to um, ruin this stage of his career. Yeah, it's um, you have accurately pinpointed a serious problem with his game. It's very basic as well. The worry is that Ollie Robinson's averaging something like 70 for Surrey in first-class cricket. You know, he, he looks like the best young Red Bull batter in England by some distance. And if he doesn't make it, I wonder if anyone will from English cricket. King Shuk Kasari asks, who are the best players in England to replace the top order? Right, well, the, the sobering thing is that the guys who have been tried and failed have earned the right to have a try so um sibley and burns you know scored very consistently at um, domestic level for quite a long time and earned their call-ups of the people who haven't been tried you could maybe look at alex lees maybe at a push you could look at luke wells but um you know that there are a lot of people have been tried a lot of people have failed uh, who, who I think will go to uh, the Caribbean, I, I, Zach Crawley, I'm sure will go. Um, I'm not sure about Burns or Hasiba Mead. Uh, and I think Alex Lees will go. Fraser Little asks, does playing Stokes injured highlight the muddled thinking in England's decision making? No, I don't think so, to be fair. I think it highlights the fact that, they're, that he's one of their best batters, which he probably is. Uh, so it highlights their reliance upon him. But I don't, I don't really see that as muddled thinking. Why is it muddled thinking, do you think? I suppose it's, you've got a, a situation where, you know, England are playing four seamers. One of them is is kind of quite crocked. One is prone to getting crocked. And they could probably have done with having an extra player in there who would have been able to help them with the ball a bit. And by having Stokes there, he's only able to do half of his job. Yeah, but he's probably still one of the best six batters in England. Um, you, you, you're you right, you could have gone into this game with an extra bowler instead of a batter. But can they afford to do that? I mean, it's actually, the batting is an even more serious problem than the bowling. I think, I think they've been failed to reach 200 five times in the series. So, I, you know, I mean, I guess it's a fair theory, but it's not one I agree with. I, I would have picked Ben Stokes. The real concern is whether he would uh, exacerbate that injury. Um, but they seem to think that that's okay as long as he doesn't bowl or I don't think he's throwing much either. <coughs> Sorry, there are loads of bugs around. I think there's one fewer because I just ate it. Um, <coughs> and yeah, it's putting up a fight. It's putting up more of a fight than the England batters. Danny asks, if England's best bowler in the last 12 months isn't considered fit, does that not suggest their definition of fitness is almost meaningless? No, I don't think so. <coughs> I think it suggests that there's a very talented uh, bowler with a lot of potential, but that as he's played more and the um, stresses and strains and rigours of international cricket have started to tell, 
some weaknesses within his game have become apparent. Um, I don't think you could really claim that they've just been fussy about his fitness because throughout this series he has gone on, off, on and off the pitch and it has meant other people have had to do his work for him and that's quite a serious thing. So, um, and in this game, you know, he hasn't been able to bowl much after. I think his, his opening spell was seven overs, but one over after that. And when you go in to, with a four uh, person attack, that is a real issue. So no, I don't think they'd be fussy though. I think that is an, uh, an area that he can get better and he can get better quite easily. Uh, so I, I very much hope he does. Can you tell how many bugs there are around here? I've been eating. <laughs> Although I've got one back, haven't I? Yeah. <laughs> Peter Wanless asks, what does Scott Boland have that Craig Overton doesn't? Hello, Peter. I think um, I, I'm a big fan, of, I, and I know Peter is too, of Craig, but I think um, he is not as quick, and he's not quite as accurate, and he's not quite as skillful. That's not, I'm not having to go at Craig there. I think he's, um, a, you know, he's a cricketer that wouldn't let England down. But let's give a bit of credit where it's due. Scott Boland has absolutely nailed his line and leg, and he has seen the ball both directions consistently and actually, at times, prodigiously. Um, you know, Craig has played for England, and he has done okay, but he, he, he hasn't had these sort of impacts anywhere. And I think that uh, one of the things that's been a bit disappointing is, you know, we heard that Craig had put on a yard quite often um, in the last year or so, and then he's turned up for England, and he hasn't really. He is what he is, which is a really good county team, a really good tryer. And uh, sorry, it sounds like I'm being really full of faint praise for him. But actually, I think if you put him side by side with Boland, he would be you know, 5% slower, maybe. And, uh, and I don't think he's got quite the same skills and the same consistency. Simon Stokes asks, uh, does Broad getting Warner make the daily disappointment worth it? No, but it is a consolation. I don't think England have bowled that badly. I mean, they've got some limitations, but, you know, the, the batters aren't giving them a chance. Jerome asks, apart from a few negative headlines and maybe a dent to their professional pride, what will the actual consequences of this embarrassing defeat be? For England or for England's players? I mean, for, for, for cricket generally, I honestly, honestly think this is a series that's damaging the brand of Test cricket and the Ashes. I, I honestly do. I know that might appear, some people will dismiss that as hyperbole, but there's no way broadcasters are going to keep paying hundreds of millions of dollars for this tosh. It's just not competitive. Already the, um, the spectator numbers are, are down. Not just because we're here, but I mean, the, 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 this, I think this, the capacity here is in the 20s. I think for this game, it may have been limited to 20,000 or so. There's 7,000 here today, 9,000 here yesterday. Um, I don't know that we've had a full house in the entire series. There are lots of mitigating factors for that, but um, equally, I think the BT figures have dipped in the UK and I, I, I from anecdotal evidence have felt less interest as the series has gone on because it hasn't been competitive. So I think it's very damaging. If you mean to the individual England players, well, I think they're naturally extremely competitive and I wouldn't at all accuse them of not hurting. They're hurting hugely. They really care. You know, they, they always care and they always do their best. The thing is that they're not, they're doing their best when they're on the tour. They're not necessarily being developed over a period of months and years to be at their best when they arrive. Uh, and I very much hope it does hurt English cricket enough to precipitate a rethink in what we're doing without going over old ground, you know. I, I see that today Tom Harrison is talking about English players playing in Sheffield Shield, playing in Australian domestic first-class cricket. Tom, for God's sake, get them playing in English domestic first-class cricket. That's the bloody problem. The problem is not them playing in overseas leagues, it's playing in your own home leagues. So get back to basics and get them playing more Red Bull cricket, get them playing more first class cricket. And um, they will have the skills much more readily to adapt to situations like this. Free Test Cricket asks, should Hobart become a regular Ashes venue? Well, it's, it's a lovely place. No doubt about that. It's the first time I've been here and I've liked it very much. I mean, realistically, these things often come down to finance. 
The fact is the other grounds are bigger and probably bring in more money. So that you would think would be a factor for them. But you know, it, it, there's no reason why not in sort of operational or cricket terms. Or, and I'm sure that were more England supporters able to come here, they'd, they'd enjoy a really lovely place. Uh, a bit like New Zealand uh, in feel and look and temperature. Um, and uh, yeah, there's there's no uh, criticism there. But um, yeah, well, no reason why this place couldn't have more test cricket. It's been really good fun. I think they've sort of nailed that side of it throughout the series, haven't they? And finally, uh, Greggles asks, it's very slim pickings, but who's been England's player of the series? And is it Mark Wood? Yeah, probably. I mean, I'm trying to think who else it could be. <laughs> um, there aren't obvious candidates out there. I thought there was going to be a, a question about Tom Harrison. Um, <laughs> I think that uh, Mark Wood, yes. Um, he's been full of heart, but equally you could... No, it'd be one of the bowlers, wouldn't it? It probably would be Mark Wood, but um, he is averaging 35 or something with the ball. Is that right? Something like that. I think there are four Australian guys averaging under 20 for their wickets. Um, you know, I think Wisdom a few years ago only gave four cricketers of the year. Maybe inclined to do that with this and just say that there isn't really an England player for the series. It's been, it hasn't been competitive. It hasn't been competitive at all. The only time it's been, you know, it's been really exciting was when England were battling to save a game, which bear in mind they did with nine wickets down because it rained for a bit. So it's been um, an absolute procession. It really does feel as if uh, we're completing this series as an obligation to broadcast as, you know, financial TV stuff. That's not what this should be about. Honestly, it feels extremely damaging, and I, I think that... Uh, Policies of English cricket are really, really damaging. Uh, really damaging Test cricket as a brand. I'm terribly disappointed in seeing it happening in front of our eyes. 